Hi, folks. Welcome to Hitting the Mark with Harry and Mark. I'm your co-host, Mark, and this is my wonderful co-host, Harry. Hello. We are two idiots who love talking about things we have no idea what we're talking about. Today, on the show, nothing. We're winging it, folks. Mm-hmm. We have a we have a slow content season, unless we want to start uh, breaking out into some different stuff. But that that's that's discussion for later. For now, I want to hear about Harry's week. My week. Yeah, fuck yeah, bring it. Bring it, Jerry. <laughs> My week has been pretty chill and uneventful. Um, not gonna lie, it's it's nice. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, I've been uh, not super busy at work, and just been uh, oh, watched a little bit of Saving Private Ryan last time we talked and the night before or last night last night last night i watched um the imitation game for the first time game why is that not like rattling off in my brain uh benedict cumberbatch uh enigma oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh alan turing mhm mhm actually really, really? enjoyable film yeah yeah really good movie i did not know all of that and obviously because it was supposed to be kept secret for a very long time and yeah dude that's fucking cool dude kick ass yeah i'm and straight overall story's cool you know um yeah i really thoroughly enjoyed myself with that movie um other than that nice um I uh, started watching, <laughs> um, I forget what the title of the series is called, but it's on Netflix, and it's uh basically, um, where is it? Oh, here we are. Uh, worst roommate ever. Um, uh, now you might think, oh, it's it might be like a sitcom or you know whatever. Uh, no, it's about, it's a Netflix documentary series, uh, about, uh, roommates killing each, uh, each other. Um, so yeah, so it, it was cool. There was one about, um, this, uh, lady who like took in like people who needed help, right? Like mentally disabled or, you know, who like, who were trying to get off the streets or whatever. And then they just like, like disappear. And like, like basically what happened was like, you would get them and they would have like no family. Right. So she would just like kill them and then never report that they died and then just keep cashing in their like social security checks. Oh, the classic move or the classic reason for it. Who doesn't love a good, you know, security check getting cashed in for you, huh? Yeah, exactly. So. And she did this for a few years, and then uh, what actually caught her was um, someone like, basically the 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 following person that she took in like actually had someone like looking out for them, and I guess she didn't expect them to keep, uh, like you know trying to be like hey how's this person how are they how are they how are they, like she's just like, thought maybe they're just like gonna drop them off and then ignore them but they like like hey so how is this person and they're like oh he he left like what what do you mean he left <laughs> why didn't she just kill this person and collect social security on him yeah or her mm-hmm. <laughs> come so, on i'm sensing a a problem mm-hmm. lack of lack of genuine foresight yeah seriously um but yeah and then the following one was a episode of basically uh what was it? It was basically uh, a roommate. Basically, he falls in love with his roommate. And then, like, she gets creeped out by it. And then they, like, get in an argument. And then he kills her. And then, like, yeah. It's weird. Um, And, like, he kills her and then, like, buries her body somewhere. And he's like, oh, I have no idea. 
you know, the, the, the classic, like, I don't know who killed her. I, I, I was in a drive. I, I went out for a drive. No, it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. Exactly. So good. Um, but yeah, that's it. That was a, that was my week. You know, it was fun. It was chill. Um, I have the on call, so that's the only downside. Um, but I haven't gotten called yet. Knock on wood. Um, hopefully I don't. I have got called. I think I told you on Tuesday. I was like about to clock out for work. I was like just chilling in the break room, like ready to clock out. And the phone rings, and I'm like, oh shit, it's an on call. So I like clock out, and then I answer the phone, and I'm like, well, I answered the phone while I was off the clock. <laughs> so, no problem. I basically just got paid an extra two hours. And it was a really easy call basically it was just showing a resident explaining over the phone to a resident how to lock their patio door because there's like a little there's like a a little trick to it so our patio doors at our property aren't just like your like your average front door where it's just a a bolt it actually is a uh it's a th- three three bolt uh door so you have to lift the handle up to lock and place the bolts on the top of the door and at the very bottom of the door. And then you can turn the not, uh, turn the like lock to put the deadbolt in the middle. But if you don't lift the handle up, it won't lock. It'll just stay open. And that was it. Sounds way too complicated. I don't think I could live where you live. Yeah, dude, I wouldn't recommend it either. A little pricey too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's it, man. Chill week. Um, uh, I got like work bought us pizza on Wednesday yesterday. Yeah, dude. Fuck, I don't know. It's been it's been chill. Nothing extravagant. Nothing crazy the usual but um, how has your week been mark Gary. <laughs> let's try to do a segue it's not working <laughs> completely okay <laughs> but you know what i i i've had a week mm. technically it's you know it wasn't during this week it was technically during last week but i took my uh Took my old man to his first con. Oh, was it the yeah. uh, East Bay Comic Con? Yeah, basically. Nice. Yeah. Tiny little thing. It's in like one of those little Hiltons, like next to no people, right? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's fun. It was his first thing. He was like, oh, what do, you, what, what do we do here? What, what's going on? And, uh, you know, I, I tell him like, oh, you know, this is a place where, you know, if if it's a smaller con, it's typically like comic booksy kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, more uh, like, oh, we sell action figures and da 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 da, yeah. and so on and so forth. And and this is his first thing, and he was having fun, right? We looked at the 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 promo mm-hmm. promo. Uh, we had a a very important guest. Oh. At this con. This, I mean, I'm talking like big, like, oh, oh, big, like big. Yeah. And, uh, turns out (laughs) guys, Eric Roberts was there. (gasps) No way. Yeah. Right. The Eric Roberts. (laughs) I tell you. Whew. And he elevated the place by like a good million mm. degrees. You have no idea. No. So anyway, so uh, to the point. So this is, you know, my dad's first time at a con. You know, he's he, he's interested. He's like, holy shit! Like, there's an actual like celebrity here, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's not like I don't know how to explain like. The childlike wonder 
that he had. He doesn't even fucking like <laughs> like Eric Roberts. It's not like he even really knows anything that was in. Like the only thing I fucking remember him in just from him is the Dark Knight where he plays fucking um Sal Maroney or yeah, Sal Maroney. Yeah. Um and then being one of the fucking suitors from the sci-fi movie uh The Odyssey. Okay, yeah. Uh Penelope, it's time uh to to finish this thing and we can get on with you marrying one of us. Okay? Capiche. So anyway. You know, we we did uh we did a full uh we did a full uh, go around, right? Yeah. And he sees him. He it, it's 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 fascinating, right? Cuz it's like we've been to cons and we mm -hmm. we know the the like the pedigree of people there. It's usually like voice actors, um a yeah. couple like, you know, small not I don't mean to say small names. There are no small names. Like you could be uh, fucking Bruce Campbell and people would be like lining up to sign their panties, right? right. And mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell isn't like it's not like he was in fucking Saving Private Ryan and has like this decorated career as like yeah. fucking Marlon Brando. Don't get me wrong, classic actor, mm -hmm. got great comedic chops, got great comedic timing, has some very good um some very good uh some. serious acting bits. But like you get the idea, right? But yeah. and and for some of these small ones, you tend to get like oh, I was the the Black Ranger from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but I was the stunt double. Yeah. And I was the backup dancer for Michael Jackson. Shit like that, right? Yep. Where you get, like, people who you know from, like, 20, 30 years ago who did, like, really sh fun shit. But it's like, you're kind of like, wait. There are man children at these cons, me included. But, like, yep. generally it's tip it's, like, young adult and not, like, millennial entirely. Like yeah. there's an entire like two generations that go to cons and like millennials still make up like a decent portion, but it's like, even then that might be a stretch. So, so that's, that's nothing uncommon, right? You go, you right. see like, Oh, Hey, I was the guy in the robot suit in fucking lost in space who did the danger. Will Robinson arm stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Oh cool. Can I get a fucking photo with you? He's like, yeah. And then there you go. Yep. So for dad, it's like, Oh shit, there's there's an actual actor here. What the fuck is going on? There's an actor here. Um it's like, you know what? I so he 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 um given his line of work, he tends to work with with like a bunch of people and he apparently knew someone uh that posted on Facebook that she knew uh Eric Roberts. Hmm. And he was like, you know what? I I kind of want to talk to him about it, right? Because he's there's no yeah. one there. Like he's getting like one or two people coming up and being like, "Hey, ha, ha, doing a photo or whatnot," you know. Um, not 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 busy by any means. And he's with his wife too, uh, who I didn't even realize oh, who has cool. some like really great behind the camera chops too. I would argue that okay. she's probably more talented than her husband. Uh -huh. That goes out to you. Uh, wife of Eric Roberts, whose name at the moment I can't quite recall, um, but you're a sweetheart. Um, so they were there, and oh, man, I felt so bad because, like, you normally don't see your parents uh, as like vulnerable. Like oh, yeah, it's not like he's starstruck. It's more like when you go to a con and you see someone that you want to talk to and it's yes. like, um, you, you kind of like, you, you got your hands kind of, he had his hands netted together and they were kind of like white because he was like, it was his first con and he didn't really know the etiquette of going up to like a celebrity yeah. and wanting to talk to them because it's like, of course celebrity gets uh, like, uh, fucking, I waited in line for like 30 minutes to get an autograph from w fucking the voice actress for Emily from, yeah. uh, Dishonored 2. Mm -hmm. And I like, I put in like a minute of conversation. That's it. And that's typically how you go along with it. I got another conversation in with, uh, the guy who does Nathan Drake in, uh, Uncharted. Oh, awesome. I had a fun fucking conversation with him too, but typically it's like, these guys are tired. They go through like they love doing this, but they they like they're signing a bunch of autographs. They're talking to a bunch of people. I get it. I'm a dime a dozen. 
this is more for me than it is for them, whatever. But that doesn't know that. I don't want to tell him that, right? right? I don't want, like, the mystique that to be ruined. And he's obviously, like, it's cute, right? Like, yeah. he's going through the, the, the anxiety of, like, wanting to go up to some random guy and, like, hey, you know, like, I want to have, like, a human conversation with you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, I, get, I convince him to go up. And he's like, hey, you mind if I get a picture with you? And Eric Arts is like, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, sure. You got a camera? And he kind of, like, looks at me, assuming I'm, like, the guy with the camera. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, my son does. And I, like, wave. And I'm like, hey, I can do it. And he's like, oh, well, get, get over here. Get over here. We'll, we'll, we'll take a photo together. So we do a photo, and it's a selfie. So he, he like, puts his arm around me mm-hmm. and puts his arm around my dad. And he cocks his head towards my dad for the first photo and he smiles and then like he like shifts his shoulder so it's like kind of in my back a bit and not like uncomfortable but like i can tell he's shifting and then he shifts it to the left and like oh this guy knows what he's what he's doing it feels kind of weird you know Mm -hmm. it feels kind of like uh i don't know like like through the motions right yeah so my dad, as soon as he's finished, he's like, hey, you know, I, I actually think we might know someone. And Eric Roberts is like, oh, hey, yeah, uh, I agreed to do a photo and interview. Thanks. And he says, my dad's like, no, I, I just wanted to because, you know, I I think you know someone. that, And he's, he just walks away. Mm. Yeah. So uh, dad's kind of got like this, hey, did I do something wrong thing? Because that's how it always works, right? Yeah. Like, you know these guys they're under a lot of stress they're interacting with a bunch of people and they have to be like the version of whatever that person expects them to be right so they're dealing with a lot of stress and you know maybe uh an actor or a voice actor someone will probably interact with like what, like 5% of the amount of people that they interact in the entire day, maybe unsatisfactorily, Mm -hmm. if I'm being generous. Yeah. This was just one of those, you know, like, oh, hey, did I do something wrong? And I was fucking pissed. Yeah. I I was like, what a fucking dick. Yeah, I'd be fucking, yeah. You've got no one. And this guy actually wants to, like, strike up a conversation with you. Like, he's willing to go to your, like, your little kiosk table and like just chat for like a moment if you don't want to be here that's fine dude like i get it but i'm like if you're gonna be here come on dude like you're like a fucking c actor but like the concept of getting like conversation with a c actor is still prestigious to some people yeah you know it's like fucking (laughs) it's like getting an interview or getting a fucking autograph from like one of the bajillion fucking awesome like extras in a Star Trek show who consistently yeah. goes there. Like, Oh, I was the fucking, uh, I was the Ferengi in the bar, like in episodes, like 10, 12, whenever of season five. And you're like, Oh, that's so friggin' cool. Yeah. But like, oh, man, I was pissed. Dad was like walking. We were walking away. I'm like, don't dad, don't worry about it. He's being a fucking dick. Just, just don't even worry about it. Don't even fucking worry about it. Like, if he's going to make a big deal about that and do some like piss ant, like talk to my agent bullshit, then fuck him. So we're finishing up and I'm like, God, I really wish this wasn't his fucking first entrance to like a con. This is so fucking bad. So we're, we're like, we're trying to like, we're go to the opposite end of the, the convention center. And like, we're trying to have a good time and fucking my dad gets patted on the back and he gets patted on the back by, uh, Mrs. Roberts. Oh. And Mrs. Roberts is like, hey, Eric wanted to kind of uh like send me over to like apologize. Personally with me, I think she just saw what he did and was like, Oh, Eric, you dick, and went yeah. to be nice. Um, I'm more than likely, you know, probably no, 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 I won't give him that credit. I could be wrong. Uh, but as it stands, I think she probably just did that because she seemed a little sweeter. Mm-hmm. So she heard out what my dad was saying, like, hey, you know, I just I think 
you know someone that I know, and I just thought it would be an interesting thing to like to mention because my dad's old fashioned, right? Like right. he doesn't get the like he's never been to a con. He doesn't get the concept of like, oh, what if I want to take a picture of this product? And like I made that mistake at one of my first cons too, where it's like, no, you have to ask permission, and like right. you ask to touch stuff, and you ask typically for like a card and whatnot. It's just yeah. it's just etiquette. But like he 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 wanted to have like a genuine human conversation with someone who I do believe had the time to do that. And this, yeah. this, this young lady was more than willing to, she, you know, they had some banter about being both from New York and, mm. you know, the, the, the program that they know their friend from and dad introduced me to her. And I was like, Hey, you know, you're very sweet, you know, uh, whatever. You know. So that was that. And then I talked to, to Stace and she's like, man, fucking, you totally should talk about this on your podcast. And then she's like, no, wait, you should say something on Twitter. Wait, did you actually put something on Twitter? I thought about it. Oh. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to do something on the lines like shout out to this and this con and Eric Roberts for providing my dad with his first con experience. Thanks, Dick. Mm -hmm. um, that was going to be my thing. Yeah. Um, and then I was going to be, uh, and then I was going to make a second one where I copied and pasted, except, uh, removed Eric Robertson, put his wife mm. and then put, thank you. You're so sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I, I just, I was like, no, 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 no. The last thing I think I'm capable of doing is like, one initiating shade right and then two the the infinitesimal consequence of if this guy actually fucking responds right because right? it's like <laughs> what's the bit in all the science fiction movies where you're mm. like Oh, we sent out a transmission. We didn't think it would come or nothing. We didn't think we'd get any response and we were beginning to lose hope. And then you find out it's like a horror science fiction and you're like, oh, but we got a response. And they, they, they want to fucking conquer humans and turn them into fucking flapjacks and eat them. Yep. Like <laughs> that's the kind of situation where it's like <laughs> we get one person who likes our content on a regular basis and then like <laughs> – one person messages Eric Roberts or like uh quote tweets Eric Roberts mm -hmm. and and the what the guy's like looking through his tweets to see if anyone talks about him. What's that fucking bit from uh Family Guy when uh, Luke oh. Perry's looking mm -hmm. through all the school newspapers? Yep. Yeah, like that. And then just starts some fucking shit and then, so so yeah that was that was my weekend um in the words of my dad we got chilled by eric roberts um <laughs> and we kept making jokes about it the entire time i tell you my dad man he's a trooper we we were driving and uh he 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 got the tickets uh you know because he was feeling uh he was feeling generous mm -hmm. and uh He's like, man, I can't believe I spent so and such money to get fucking chilled by Eric Roberts. And I said, no, dad. No, 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 no. You've misplaced your priority. You've paid so and so money to tell a great story the rest of your life. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, probably the most eventful or the most, uh, uh, not eventful, but um, ah, oh, Jesus, uh, uh, interesting mm -hmm. con, and it was like a, a like a six hour long con, and I was there for less than an hour, so damn, dude, yeah, the fuck, yeah, I think Art. the new slogan is gonna be "fuck Eric Roberts" here. <laughs> okay, I have the photos. I'll show them to you. Oh, dude, yes. Oh, get this, though. Mm. My mom, for some reason, I don't know what it is. She, I don't know if it's true, but apparently, like, him and his sister, Julia Roberts, I don't know if you've heard of her. Wait, um, what? Seriously? Yeah. Eric Roberts is Julia Roberts' big brother. Wow. Yeah. 
So apparently they had some kind of falling out. And because my mom is like a fucking team player, she fucking hates Eric Roberts because she likes Julia Roberts. Nice. And <laughs> I went, <laughs> I went to dad and we were talking about this, like, Oh wow. Now like mom legitimately has a reason to fucking hate Eric mm -hmm. Roberts. Right. Um, I, I went to dad like two days ago and I was like, Hey pop, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to pay Harry to Photoshop mom's face into the photo. I think, I think she'd love that. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. I'll get like the smarmiest fucking shit eatingest grin smile I can find on my mom and just like, get it, get it, like really lazily Photoshop too. Not like, like, not like, Oh, Hey, let's do some blending. Like, like fucking obvious. hard edges. Yeah disproportionate oh so good so fucking good <laughs> yeah other than that like uh i've been working thankfully my fucking job is uh is i mentioned this already is a uh is moving over a bit so it's a little closer to where i'll be uh it's closer to where i live so it'll be easier for me to commute uh fucking walking distance fucking walking distance oh, so good yeah and because uh, you, Stace, and uh, the friend I reconnected with have been so fucking supportive, I've actually been keeping up on, on some model stuff again. So <laughs> hopefully I don't drop that anytime soon. I'll be not giving regular stuff like I did before just because mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, make a thing out of it too much. But I don't know. Maybe I'll post some um, end result stuff on yeah. uh, on Twitter oh, if I'm dude. feeling, yes. you know, feeling cute, thought I'd post. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so fun stuff. I'm working on the Tau. I'm working on God. It's part of the reason I stopped working on one of the models is because the seam lines don't line up. Oh, okay. And it's one of those little things that fucking just kills my enthusiasm, right? Like, oh, it's not okay. perfect. Everyone's gonna notice. You know, forget the fact that like I'm not trained enough to be good at any painting whatsoever. It's it's the seam line that like a foot away you can't see yeah that everyone's gonna notice and not my like shit paint work right mm -hmm. so that's how my mind works like i can't do it i'll never be good enough to like fix that to make it look natural um my painting is just so good doesn't need any any improvement fuck so yeah, yeah. but hopefully i'll keep at it yeah um yeah that's pretty much it fucking solid week man fuck yeah fucking uh yeah I, yeah fuck i mean it sucks that it went down like that but you're right it's a story that is going to be told for a long time oh you have no idea absolutely you know what i'm sorry Eric Roberts is not a C actor. Fucking, he is a prolific actor. Lone Star Deception, The Unlikely Good Samaritan, IRL, Induced Event, Billboard, I Want Blood, It Wants Blood, Hollywood, Holly W-O-U-L-D, Black Bear, The Savant, 79 Parts, The Director's Cut, A Karate Christmas Miracle, The Evil Insider, Monster Island, The Turnaround to 90 Feet from Home, The Immortal Wars Resurgence, Prescience, The Reliant, Surge of Dawn, Night Walk, Seven Deadly Sins, Inside the Rain, The Choice, The Estate, People in Landscape, Hard Luck Love Song, Ape vs. Monster, Pup Salone, 616 Wolford Lane, The mm. Shrew Process, mm -hmm. The Rebels of PT-218, Babylon, and Amityville Bigfoot. That's all in the last three years. Damn. Man. Prolific. I suppose when I'm, if I'm ever that prolific, I might not have time for my fans. Yeah, it's true. Jesus. Jesus. God damn damn fucking immortal wars and then immortal wars 2 <laughs> damn he's in a sequel That's who silly. thought not me and you can tell these are all great because i can't select them on wikipedia 
Oh my god. Oh. What's his name again? <laughs> Eric, 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 Eric Roberts. Eric, I, I thought it was Rogers. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. Oh my god. Oh this, no. This is bad. Oh, this Immortals movie. Oh, oh no, Tom Sizemore is in it with him too. Oh, it's bad. Tom Sizemore, the 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 guy who collects the dirt in um, uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh wow! Okay, I know that person. Oh man! Oh, it's so good. There's this guy with like a belt around his chin and head. <laughs> Why? I don't even give a shit. Never mind. Oh my god, this is so good. Anyway, fucking folks. Like I said, slim pickings this uh, this region. We'll try expanding our our stuff, mm -hmm. but in the meantime, this is what we got. Harry, yeah, kick us off. Um, I heard you have some issues with a little show called. But we weren't going to talk about that. No? Oh, well, we don't have fuck. to. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I tell you that in confidence. You know, your girlfriend, she's upset. And, you know, it's like you got to put that on the fucking podcast. Well, we can talk about something. Harry, yeah. what are we talking about? <laughs> um, there's a trailer you want to bring up. Wait, no, hold on. What show do we talk about? Harry. <laughs> God damn it. Picard. It was Tell me a about joke, Picard. Harry. God. You said a little problem, and I was joking about, like, sexual uh, dysfunction, Harry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> God hey, damn it. hey, there's a show called Picard. Can you, um, can you tell me why you're upset with it? <laughs> Stop the Rocky Start. I'm not going to review it. Um, I have some issues with it, but, um, Tell me the issues. I was just talking with you. Well, no, mm, no, 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 not yet. Yes, yes, I want to yes. get a, a f <laughs> no, 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 no. I will talk about a, a thing that I have an issue with just in general, but it's not, uh, it's not native. I think only to, uh, this season of Picard. Okay. Um, as fun as it is to see Patrick Stewart back and with a new group, uh, I miss some of the more, I think, straightforward science fiction-y aspects of it, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Star Trek does really well when it occasionally becomes an action-adventure. Okay. Uh Star Trek First Contact, I think, is the perfect example. Star mm -hmm. Trek First Contact, I think, is probably the top three or four. Top three. Top three. Top three? Okay. Is is in the top three of, like, best Star Trek movies. And keep in mind, <sighs> that might not be saying too much compared to the shows, but... um. Essentially, what was going on is the first movie that ever came out for Star Trek was, like, really, really trying to, to emulate 2001 A Space Odyssey. They had a huge budget. They went over time, and everything seemed to be very, very slow-paced in, like, the uh, the methodical, you know, Stanley Kubrick kind of way, and it didn't... Mm -hmm turn out that well um the next movie wrath of khan which is uh, everyone says it's the best i personally love it because i think it's great it's got good themes and whatnot um is wrath of khan wrath of khan takes a character from the show and like revamps him into like this revenge seeking shark of a person and it's really damn good great stakes great emotional investment solid fucking ending the third one kind of undermines some of that but is still fairly okay um the fourth one is fun uh we go back in time and get the whales yeah um the fifth one is fucking batshit 
crazy. Um, they find God, and he turns out to be a dick. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the at the moment, most of these movies, and the the last one in the the original series, is is very fun. Okay. Uh, it it very enjoyably ties all the uh, the stuff together and preps everyone for uh, the new series. The uh, the next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these movies, in some way or another, kind of strip some of the conventions of the show. They can afford to. They've got a larger budget. They have mm, a larger pool of writers or more more dedicated group of writers. Mm-hmm. Um, but they seem to be focused, I think, a little more in like a a, a sort of action adventure or adventure theme. Oh, uh, Star Trek, the first picture, is very much science fiction-y. There's very little action. It's very suspenseful, uh, or at least it tries to be. Uh, and it's it's very ponderous, like very ponderous. Um, the second one is a is a is a died in the wool revenge story. You could, in some form or another, you could make this like a western, and it would work. You know, just change around the starships, change around the 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 machine that terraforms planets and shit. You know, um, that can double as like a as like a western, and it would still work. Mm. The third one is about you know like no, we don't talk about the third one. The fourth one's a time traveling thing, but the the whole idea is like. They have these group of actors who are already kind of set into these performances, have some fun with them, so on and so forth. The last movie in the TOS franchise is The Undiscovered Country, which is like a, a whodunit action film. Mm. Uh, you know, the uh, the Klingon Empire is facing like this massive uh ecological disaster and the federation steps in to help and a peace is being brokered but the the emperor is assassinated or the chancellor is assassinated and we have to figure out who and kirk is framed and he has to you know charge spock to help him prove his innocence and so on and so forth and it's this big plot to undermine the federation and uh uh the Rom Jesus and Kronos's yes. kind of uh relations. Mm. So still an action adventure, but there's some there's some political parallels that I think really work. Um and at the heart of it I think that bit is really well done, even if it does focus a little more on like the uh the detective stuff. Mm. Um then we go at, uh, this is getting to a point, I'm sorry. No, you're yeah, good. Yeah. Uh <laughs> The next movie is Kirk and Picard kind of teaming up. It's the Picard TNG era where, uh, you know, we've returned to that kind of sci-fi aspect where every episode is a different thing, completely insulated from one another, right? In fucking TOS, Ahura loses her fucking memory and learns to read. And the next episode, she's fucking fine. Um, And... (laughs) fucking TNG like a character could be fucking tortured uh into seeing multiple lights where there are only like four. Oh, how many lights are there? There are five. No, there are four. And like the next episode he's fine. Um so the same kind of premise is going on here where it's like we take a concept, we focus on our characters and kind of just play it out that way. Mm, it was okay. Okay. That's where First Contact comes in. First mm. Contact has this bombastic score. It's got action. It's sexy. Like it's mm. it's like fun in a way that that would attract like non Star Trek fans. I think mm. the thing about the previous movies is that while you can watch them all for the most part independently, except for the fucking third one, um, you really had to be invested in like the cast, right? 
Yeah. Like, of course, these things still made a lot of fucking money. They were big. It, they dominated the eighties, these movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing about contact is you didn't have to be a fan to enjoy what first contact was. It had great action. Like I said, it had solid special effects. It was scary. Uh, it, and it was funny too. It embodied, I think the perfect mixture of that, like adventure action, adventure kind of mold. Yeah. And it still was faithful to our characters. Picard has a wonderful, absolutely wonderful arc in it that parallels uh, the arc that Khan has. Not the arc that Khan has, but the theme that, that's in Revenge of Khan. Yeah. Or Wrath of Khan. Jesus Christ. Um, Star Trek Insurrection tries to do that, the, the sequel to First Contact. Uh, to middling success. I think Star Trek Insurrection is pretty good, despite what a lot of people think. Um, And then Star Trek Nemesis is the last movie in the the TNG franchise. Um, It's awful. It's absolutely terrible. (laughs) It incorporates all of the bad aspects of, like, the action-adventure story that First Contact did so well, and that insurrection did to a lesser extent Mm -hmm. um the problem i have uh that i'm coming up to that i'm noticing is that i feel as though star trek picard seems to really want to evoke the uh the first contact kind of feeling and they they seem to be getting in my opinion (laughs) something more akin to nemesis and nemesis came out in like 2003 it was really bad it came out around the same time as the season finale or the series finale of star trek enterprise which was poorly received and was considered the death knell of star trek in the early 2000s um so it's difficult when i'm 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 sitting here and i'm talking about star trek something i i love very much and uh Last year, I watched Picard, Mm -hmm. and I was thinking to myself, what is it trying to be? What, what, Mm. like, there are so many things that they're trying to do in all these different directions that's not working, but they're trying to do a, an action adventure romp that sacrifices, I think, a lot of what it's, you know, known for. And I'm getting the same feeling with the second season. I'm not going to review it just yet. I think we have like one or two more episodes and then I'll get into it probably next week or the following week. But what gets me is that there's so much going on that I don't really know like what it wants to do with, with all of these movies, uh, in one form or another, they rely a little bit on the expanded lore, just a little bit, just just a fucking uh, paquito. Yeah. Um, while at the same time telling like one concise story. Yeah. The first story is like, hey, we have to figure out what this weird, strange beacon is out in space. The second one is, hey, uh, my old nemesis wants to fucking kill me. The third one is like, no, I'm not fucking talking about the third one. The fourth one is, <laughs> hey, um, we need to go back and rescue fucking whales. And the fifth one is, like, how do we, um, how do we prove our innocence while at the same time, like, preventing war between the Klingons and the Federation? Um, okay. And these are very concise, straightforward stories. What I'm seeing in Star Trek Picard season one and two is like a hodgepodge, a fucking cornucopia of all of these different things that they want to do that just aren't working. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with trying to strip a lot of the Star Trek elements in favor of doing an action adventure with Star Trek references. Mm -hmm. Which I've talked about before. I like when a story tells a story first 
mm-hmm. and then adds all of the 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 franchise stuff. But I feel less like that's what they're trying to do here and more trying to catch audiences however they can. Mm. I really enjoyed the premise. Like the first episode, I, I actually thought it was exhilarating. And the latest episode, the episode that came out today, the first half I thought was actually very interesting. They did mm. something kind of fascinating. But they keep going in directions that I, I think just, just disappoint me at almost every turn. Uh, there are things that I do appreciate. I'll always appreciate. I'll go into that again. But yeah, I, I can't quite remember <laughs> what the point I was trying to make was. Um, Star Trek Picard is not that great. I enjoy it, but it's still not that great. And uh, it just kind of feels like a generic... Uh, you know how, like... Uh, uh, Network mm-hmm. television kind of has like that that glossy, cheaper feeling to it now. Yeah. I feel like Picard is kind of stuck in that now, mm. where it's kind of a little generic. Uh, you know, it's still got kind of the tropes that um, that uh, modern science fiction suspense shows have now. Kind of yeah. like what was it? That Manifest show from a couple of years back. Everything seems to mm-hmm. want to 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 kind of mimic or parrot lost to some yeah. failed degree. I'm not saying that's what Star Trek is doing, but Star Trek is nonetheless kind of falling or at least Picard is falling into some uh some issues. And I'll I'll try to elaborate more clearly on them uh next week. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> God, all I do is fucking talk. Jesus. Fantastic. I love it. I'm over here eating. You didn't, you didn't even know. I, I gotta give you a crackers. fucking charcuterie board, fucking dude. I ate a, um, a f- uh, keto uh, peanut butter cup. Ooh. Yeah, man. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it. But um, what what is it called? What is that thing? It's it's a cheese platter, right? But fancy, right? No, maybe. Mark, hey, Harry, Mark. Oh, there you go. Um, what's what's? I the... said charcuterie, you fuck ass. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear it. Sorry. <laughs> charcuterie. Yeah. Um, I've had one of those before. Yeah, it's fa- fancy. Yeah, dude, it's good. I like them. Um. I wouldn't spend... I have to make you one after I make one for my girlfriend, then she'll feel bad. You got it. <laughs> um, let me say, um, okay. There's something on the list that I was going to make you talk about first, but make me talk about fuck that. Son, what? this is a free country. I can <laughs> talk about whatever I want. Um, so you dabble on Twitter a little bit. I dabble. Um, I dabble. Yeah, um, I dabble too. Pro- more more than you, I- I'm assuming. Um, and occasionally, what's your kind of burger, Harry. Huh? What's your favorite kind of burger? God, you. So you you dabbled. Um. So this has been a dis- that question right there. I'm guessing you saw the picture in the discussion. Um, I don't understand how people try to like. I get it. I get it when people compare something like a McDonald's and a Burger King, right? Because they're both fast food joints, right? Um, I get it when they're like comparing, uh, like five star restaurants, right? Especially if they're like in the same, like, you know, uh, genre of food, right? I don't know if that's what you would call it, genre of food, yeah. but you know, if like you compare like Chinese restaurants, right? Or Italian restaurants, or you know what I mean? Like, it, it makes sense, right? But to me, it never makes sense when people compare a fast food restaurant like 
a McDonald's, a, a Carl's Jr., a Wendy's, to something that is not fast food. Like, it, like the, the thing was, like, people keep throwing five guys into the discussion as if it's a fast food restaurant. It's not. Five guys is not fast food. Five guys, one, is they're selling you like a $10 plus burger. Fast food places don't sell $10 burgers. They, what's up? Gourmet fast food. If that's what you want to call it, right? Like, like I would compare five guys with habit. Because they're both basically you have to sit down to eat or you take it back to wherever you need to. You can't go on a drive through, get it quick and leave. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think first and foremost, we have to determine the criteria for a fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. And if you wish to endeavor to build a criteria in which we can discuss Hold on, hold on. At a later criteria. date, CR mm -hmm. I T T E R I A for a fast food uh, restaurant. It covers any restaurant concept with thirty more establishments na nationally. Okay, so number. fast food is less uh -huh. about quality of food mm -hmm. and more about property mm -hmm. okay and business model yes so then i would imagine five guys would fall into that uh that title then of fast food mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah harry look up how many fucking franchises there are of five guys no, 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 no. i don't think that's no i'm reading something else don't what determines if a restaurant is fast food? So-called fast food restaurants usually operate in chains or as franchises and heavily advertised offer limited menus, typically comprising hamburgers, hot dogs, fried chicken, or pizza, and their compliments, and also offer speed, convenience, and familiarity to diners who may eat in the restaurant or take their food. Uh, I don't know. Where the fuck? Okay, I I was reading things and then it went away. This is stupid. Now I gotta go to a different article. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. Well, look, to me, Five Guys isn't fast food. It's not. Look, it's like, would would you consider like a Mexican restaurant restaurant fast food? Like your typical Mexican restaurant here in California. Well, no, it would depend on the context. There's a beautiful restaurant I love that sells like food from De Efe that I don't think is fast food. Like it's sit down food, mm -hmm. and then there is a spot that I would consider fast food. Which spot is that? So I can get an idea. Uh, there is a spot up uh, by Walnut Creek mm -hmm. that um, would fall, or at least in my opinion, in the criteria of fast food. Well, no, never mind on that. I think... <laughs> I wouldn't even consider Taco Bell Mexican, but like... Yeah. Taco Bell would be, like, fast food. But I've yet to actually, like, I mean, El Pollo Loco would be fast food. But then, I again, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I get that it, like, sells, like, the bare minimum of what, like, Mexican food is. Okay, but, so what makes it fast food, though? Uh, well, you were reading it, and it was based, it seems to be based more off of property and size no, 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 of no, no. the business. What I'm reading is California's Fast Recovery Act impact on food industry. I don't know why that was the first thing that popped up. I was just reading Come what was on, in front of Harry. me. Come on, Harry. That's why I was trying to correct you. Right, man? I was trying to correct you. 
Uh, fast food restaurant. All right, let's go to the Wikipedia. A fast food restaurant, also known as a quick service restaurant within the industry, is a specific type of restaurant that serves fast food cuisine, has minimal table service. The food served is fast in fast food restaurants is typically part of a meat sweet diet. Offered from limited menu, cooked in bulk in advance, and kept hot. Finished and packaged to order. Usually available for takeaway. Though seating may be provided, fast food restaurants are typically part of a restaurant chain or franchise operation that provides standardizing ingredients and or partially prepared foods and supplies to each restaurant through controlled supply channels. The term, quote-unquote, fast food was recognized in a dictionary by Merriam-Webster in 51. Arguably, the fast food restaurants originated in the United States with White Castle 1921. Today, American founder fast food chains as such as McDonald's and KFC are multinational corporations that outlets across the globe. Variations on the fast food restaurant concepts include fast casual restaurants and catering trucks. Fast casual restaurants have higher sit-in ratios, offering a hybrid between counter service typical at fast food restaurants and a traditional table service restaurant. Catering trucks, also called food trucks, often parked just outside workshop work sites, are popular with factory workers. Hmm. Given okay. that some of that is may or may not be limited to, I would argue that uh, Los Gallos, I think, does fall under the uh, that criteria. Mm -hmm. So, fair enough. Like, it's very vague on what it is. Yes. It's just like... It, it, it straight up says, like, it serves fast food cuisine and has minimal table service. Like, a lot of places are like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it's very vague. At least That's on tough. Wikipedia. Can we, I wish I can look it up. I don't know. Okay. So my criteria what a fast food restaurant is, generally... As a fucking drive through. If it has a drive through, that's fast food for me. If they have really cheap food, also a big part of fast food for me. When there's no drive through and most of the stuff costs like, you know, when, when a meal is like, like, like 15 to $20 for one person, if you get like, you know the, the the entree the side dish and and the drink right so typically if you go to like uh obviously a, a burger joint it's going to be the burger the fries and the drink right um a fast food restaurant is going to be like ten dollars tops right maybe ten dollars and change at this point uh with inflation for a whole meal but generally it's like under ten bucks a full meal um the food is obviously like oh hey they fucking just slapped everything together but you know where you're getting what you pay for right you know it's a fast food joint you know you're going to mcdonald's you know you're going to jack in the box you know what you're getting it's cheap it's fast you're just you're just getting you're just feeding yourself and you're leaving or like safeway fall into that category then Mm, I would say cheap food, no. no seating. No, because uh, mm -hmm. it does say minimal table service. So I feel like there would be like if you think of any fast food restaurant, there is like if you want to order it and eat it in the you know at the location, you can, you know, but their main thing is about you coming in, getting food, and getting the fuck out, right? Um. But, like, to me, when when people, like, look, this whole thing, why it bothers me is because I'm an In-N-Out fanboy. You know this. And it irritates me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it irritates me when they're comparing it to a, a, a restaurant that is not have their basis of, like, cheap, quick food. You know what I mean? That's why I was saying, like, when you compare Mc 
McDonald's to Burger King, it makes sense because they're both fast food restaurants. That's their thing. When you look at a McDonald's burger, you're like, wow, well, it was cheap. You look at a, bur a Burger King burger and you're like, well, it was cheap. If you went to a place like Five Guys or Whataburger or not Whataburger, um, what's that new place called? Um, I don't know. There's like a bunch of, bur oh, let's say Habit, right? Five Guys or Habit, right? If you go in there and the prices that they value, right? And you get something like what they serve at McDonald's, you, you're going to be really pissed off because the, the pricing is a lot higher, right? And it's fine. You know, if you pay more, that means the quality is going to be better. But if the quality is going to be better, it means it's going to take a little longer for you to get your food because they're actually preparing it, maybe adding in an additional stuff and not just slapping everything together and like, here's your food, move on to the next customer, right? So it's like, that's where I separate it. The pricing and, and, and the, the speed of it. So when people compare things like in and out and five guys they are like, well, five guys is just way better. It's like, well, you're comparing like an actual fast food restaurant to like, an act, like a restaurant. Like if I'm paying 10 plus dollars for a fucking burger, I expect it to be good. You know what I mean? When I, when I go to McDonald's and I get like a shitty ass burger for two bucks, I'm fine with it being shitty because I paid $2. You know, and of course I'd be like, yes, five guys is better than McDonald's, but McDonald's has a $2 burger where fucking five guys has a 10 plus dollar burger. It just, I can't compare the two. It's what's the phrase you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. I, that's how I look at it. When people say five guys is better than in and out, it's like you're comparing apples and oranges. It doesn't make any sense when I'm, when you're like a double, double at in and out is under five bucks, a double cheeseburger at, um, five guys. Uh, when I bought it was like, like $11, the burger alone. When I in and out, I can get, uh, the bur double burger, double, the double, double with the animal fries and a drink for like eight bucks. So it's not plain fries. It's like fries with cheese and sauce on it. So it's like, I can't compare that. Huh? Yeah. Oh dude. And uh, did, wait, have I ranted to you about the, my one experience at five guys? Yeah. You no, you can't, you can't bring this up. You're, you're introducing bias bias that you've already shown okay well i won't bring it up then all right i won't no but, you need to you, okay. you've already admitted a bias i, I swear i thought <sighs> i already fucking i swear i brought it up before anyways <clears throat> um either way i believe you harry okay but so that's basically it for me that's how i separate the two can can you put me on the other side where I can agree that I'm wrong? I think, Harry, uh -huh. you're making a monetary argument. Okay, can you explain what a monetary argument is? Money. You're making a money argument. Uh, an argument around money. You're saying, mm. like, uh, so there's X amount of establishments being um put in the same category and what you take issue with is some of these places charge more and behave more like a cheaper restaurant than they would uh fast food mm -hmm. and i'm thinking in your argument <sighs> In and out would probably be somewhere in the top, but because of this kind of, uh, kind of like this kind of inflation of what people are saying is fast food, it's probably ending up somewhere in the middle, right? Mm. So, I don't disagree with you when it term when it comes to like, 
uh, money and quality and so on and so forth. Um, I don't believe I really have an argument against what you're saying because I haven't given it the kind of thought that I you absolutely have. Um, I will say that I have never thought of the criteria for a fast food chain. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'll accept the one that you, you, you talked over, but I would actually like to talk about what would be uh, sound criteria for a fast food chain and how to like incorporate that into what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on one hand, it comes to mind like, oh, well, you know, McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell and fucking all the other spots, those places have existed for years and we're so used to comparing them yeah. that like maybe it wouldn't hurt to include them in a different bracket, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, having said that, I do see a bit of a difference between something like Five Guys where you are walking out of there with like higher quality food sometimes and uh, less money in your wallet. Right. Mm -hmm. So I do think that that consideration is a little different. So I do think there should be a distinction if we're putting it that way. Yeah. Um, If we're talking about like their business model, I would probably say that despite the difference in quality, they both kind of, or these, these, most of the places that we've talked about, even if they are priced differently, kind of operate the same, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder what yeah. kind of labor component factors into it now. Like, should that even be figured in? Like, mm. so um, when it comes to what you're talking about, I I would agree with that. I think how you have that phrased or how you have that parsed out, yeah, I do think it would be a little weird to have like what. Uh, like a matrix of, or a, a little diagram or a little thing of like 10 to 15 restaurants or fast food chains and you're all comparing them in the same way. Yeah, that's probably an imprecise metric. Okay. I'm definitely on board with how you've got that, got Thank that you. going. Yeah. But. Oh, but. <laughs> oh, but. Uh, I don't, I, I, I briefly saw it and I was going to give you shit for it. Um, but if people wanted to make a comparison, I think Twitter's the perfect place for people to just make stupid comparisons. Yeah. And stupid, like, like not diagrams, but like charts of like spots that are vaguely related to one another. Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think, I can't quite think of how I wanted to phrase that now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I uh, I think that's fair what you're saying. Yeah, I just because it's not just on Twitter. I've had discussions with physic like people in front of me telling me like, "Oh, Five Guys is better than In and Out." I'm just like, like, how does that make any sense? <laughs> course it is but like you're judging like two completely different not completely different but you're judging two different like platforms of quality right yeah. and that's, like of that's course exactly it. like uh, of course in my opinion yeah i i do think like i don't care for either of the franchises per- personally mm-hmm. but like it honestly depends on what you want first of all yep. and then it like depends on your own specific criteria like i can say right off the bat for me at least like like i said i don't like either of them particularly that much depends on what i want at the time and fuck and i lost my train of fucking thought god damn it my fault no it's not your fault i just fucking oh god damn it i was thinking hold on hold on let me backtrack reference so on and so forth so you're going into a place right you go into five guys and i don't think i've ever seen people go into five guys for like socialization Mm -hmm. right so you go into five guys you spend depending on what you get you could spend like 30 bucks 
Yeah. yeah. On like two burgers, some fries, some drinks, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You go in, you get a solid burger. I do think the food quality is better than in and out mm-hmm. um, That being said, for how it's priced and how quickly you can get the food, I think in and out is pretty goddamn good. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned before, there is a socialization quality that in and out seems to have in some way that I don't think anecdotal, anecdotal, intuitive. This doesn't mean like, this is a hazard is everywhere else. It's simply from what I've seen, and that shouldn't necessarily be taken as fact. But yeah. In and Out has a socialization quality that I have yet to see Five Guys have, mm. and that's something that I think could be considered. So, yeah, comparing them is a little weird. Like, of course, the food's better, but what kind of factors you're going are you taking into account? Like. In and out is fast food, and Five Guys. I do still think is fast food, but we do see that there are there are other restaurants or like places that have fast food esque qualities. Where's the cutoff? Like Kinder's. Kinder's has what four or five branches in California. It's a small. Mm. Doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. But they have a fast food like quality to them, don't they? Mm, yeah. Even even if people mainly sit down, right? You go up to, because the thing is, is I would consider going up to a register and ordering like is a huge component of fast food. That's something that I don't think has been brought up. Like, I think that's a unifying factor going Mm -hmm. up, putting an order and waiting for your order and then going back to sit down and eat instead of sitting down, being taken care of by a server. Most Fast food restaurants don't provide uh, a, a service. Right. Or how do I want to put this? Don't have a service representative. Right. I'm, I'm fucking putting a bow on it. They don't have servers. They don't mm-hmm. have uh, they don't have bussers. They don't have anything of that like or ilk or whatever. Yep. All they have are the people who take the order, the people who make the food, and the people who say sorry. Let me fix that in case some asshole fucking complains. Right. Yep. And that's it. Is should that be considered? Or is that just something that we just take as a given with all restaurants within this, like, not grading, but, like, criteria? Um, I think, it, I believe it's a given. Like, Because you're... for me, that's, that's like, a baseline. Like, yeah. if, if I go into, like, Hootie Hoots Hamburgers yeah. and they sit me down... Mm-hmm. That's a restaurant. Yeah. If I fucking walk into a spot and some dude in uh, a fucking uh, 50s waitress outfit rollerblades by and is like, hey, doll, what you want? And like sits me down. That's a restaurant. If I go into fucking uh, McAsshole McClack Clack Mac Boo Boo mm-hmm. and I have to go up to a register and they're like, what do you want? That's fast food. I get well, no action. I do consider that a particularly hard line. Mm-hmm. I do think that uh, a register going up and taking the order up there falls pretty heavily in like the realm of fast food. Now, if you want to make a hierarchy where it's like fucking with the Texans who swear fucking compulsively that Whataburger is like the best burger on place, you're like, okay, here's Whataburger at the top. And at the bottom, you have like McDonald's, uh, Burger King, and but this is still its own classification of mm-hmm. fast food, right? Yeah. Like, Whataburger, like I keep saying, oh, like Dutch Brothers too, or any of these spots where you go up, you order, you wait, and then you get your food, and you typically leave, or as you said, with limited seating, you'll sit down and eat. Yeah. I consider that a criteria for identifying. Most of the time, like 90% of the time, a fast food, like, joint, Mm -hmm. franchise, Mm -hmm. place arena. Yeah. And it's all, then, I do think it's a matter of, of parsing out what the hierarchy is or what, like, the, the, the separation is. Because, for me, a fast food restaurant is a place that removes the service portion of the food. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a big component. And... 
I say register and not removal of 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 uh, servers just because I don't really give a shit. It's just right. it's a lazy thing. I could say like the removal of service industry or service workers, or I could just say it has a register that you have to go to. I picked the the one that I've been fucking stuttering over the last couple of minutes. Yep. I think that's a criteria. And then, like I said, I have no problem bunching all of those together. But if you wanted to do a little pyramid or like a, a, an oval, like, hey, in the middle, what's the most widely liked? And then like, hey, what's something that people like the least at the bottom and stuff people like the most at the top? You know, mm -hmm. you do that. But a box where they're all in the same, just mingling together. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You you make a solid point. You make a solid point. Uh, I definitely agree with you when it comes to like servers, right? Like it, that does make a big difference. Um, that definitely separates a a restaurant from a fast food restaurant. I agree with that. Um, now hold on though. Hmm? That uh, that old hot dog spot by where I used to live. Mm -hmm. Is that fast food or is that a diner or a restaurant? Because here's the thing. Believe it or not, beside all of the shit that I've been saying, and I can't give you a reason because I don't have any, like, this is not like hard science. I consider that a diner or a restaurant. Mm. Damn. You uh, see where the issue is? I and you've been I there. You, you know I the one I'm talking about. I consider that a restaurant. Okay. Like to me, like, cause it, cause it was one of those where you walk up, you place your order, right, and then they kind of call you up for your food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a restaurant to me. Again, what separates me when it comes to like fast, act, like the, the term fast food for me is always the um. Uh, the drive-through aspect. What about um ownership. I don't really think ownership really matters. If I may. Yeah, go for it. Part of what I loved about that uh, that restaurant or mm -hmm. that diner or we wanna part of what I loved about that place mm -hmm. was the fact that it was family owned or at least yeah. owned by like a local group and they would always ask me how the food was they would always ask me if i needed anything they were there through a couple relationships they knew my parents uh you know there is a personable quality that they could afford to do it was very laissez-faire most businesses like that can get away with a lot of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i does again this is solely based off of my singular experience but you you don't typically get that kind of 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 service mm -hmm. personability mm -hmm. charitability yeah. in a in a franchise in a corporate owned spot You're or correct. with a corporate model I so I, I think maybe a corporate model should be something that we also use as a criteria I can see your position there um I I feel like if it's especially like family owned, like they have like one, maybe, maybe two restaurants that they own. Right. Um, I, I w would immediately throw them into like a restaurant. Like I, I like, unless like, for example, down the road here, um, there's a empty, what used to be, Wendy's. So it's no longer there. But some somebody bought the place. Um and they um obviously they didn't last long, but they bought the place and they ran a restaurant there for a couple of months. How long do you how long did they last long? Yeah, like a couple months or so. Like, they, they didn't, they really didn't last long. But, like, that would be an interesting thing of, like, because I believe, I've never actually 
pulled up and um tried to order through the drive through but I believe they they have the drive through available um and that's one of those that I'm like because my argument is that if you have a drive through you are fast food hmm? that's a good point Jamie making everything fast like most of the stuff process and art sitting there waiting. Yeah, I mean, Livy makes a, a valid point saying how the food is prepared. Where, like, okay. most fast food restaurants, they're, like, like, not fresh, basically, right? Like, they're being sent, like, you know, from, like, a distribution center of, like, you know, wherever. And they just come in, dump off frozen well, foods, and then... In and out, because it was fresh, right? Ah, uh, Livy's making a good point. So, if... If we're discussing Livy's point is food, uh, um, food preparation, preparation, um, where a restaurant usually has fresh food. You know, if 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 it's the vegetables, whatever, they go out get fresh food or fresh uh, uh fruit and vegetables, whatever they're gonna use, and fresh meat and stuff like that, and they they make it. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, where typically for me, and I would agree, fast food restaurants don't usually do that. They usually you know, have somebody send this food out, right? Like, but yeah, already made patties and everything. But Livy's making the argument that In and Out has the potato sent to them, but they cut the potatoes there. Where in other places, I'm sure usually they have to, or they already have them pre cut and everything, right. frozen, and they just, you know, throw them in the fryer, frozen, you know, and everything. Where at In and Out, it's a potato, not frozen, fresh, and they chop them up there and then throw them in the fryer. So that, I mean, that is, that is one of In-N-Out's gimmicks, right? Like cutting the potatoes, using that machine, you would hear it. And if you're da- taking the drive through you see them making the fries using the machine, cutting the potatoes. So it's a gimmick that they do, but... Yeah, like a yeah. So, uh, one quality of it would probably fall under like food preparedness or like mm-hmm, level mm-hmm. of level of effort in food preparedness. Yeah, how, no food preparedness. Yeah. No, how do you? No, that doesn't, that doesn't because that would just mean like how is the food prepared for the person? Yeah. Uh, ingredients. Qual- then I think ingredients. Quali- would quality probably... of ingredients or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. that works. I like that. Yeah. So quality of ingredients by my criteria, I would probably say like uh, the removal of a service worker mm-hmm. and something franchise based. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, like again, for me, if it has a drive-through, it's fast food. To me. If it has a drive through it's fast food. If I have to park, get out of my car, and walk into your restaurant, I am going into a restaurant. Whether you call me up for my food or you drop it off on my table. Because there are um, times where these quote-unquote fast food places that don't have drive throughs like, they do drop off the food occasionally. They do, like, make you order, but they go and drop off the food at your table. Not all the time, because if they're busy, I'm sure they're, like, they just call your name, you come up, grab the, grab your food. But there's other places that, like, if, you know, they're not too busy, they just go drop it off. Is that separate? Is that different? Because they're not, that's not their job, but they do do it occasionally. Is it because it's not something they do all the time that if that doesn't count Mm, that's something but like it seems that there is some leeway there there is a lot of gray area there's a lot of gray area um again to me like my foot is still firm like firmly on the ground when it comes to drive-thrus because it 
anything that's fast has a drive through you know obviously we already talked about the, the fast food restaurants but um i mean you think of fucking starbucks starbucks has a lot of drive through places and they're quick they're fast that their oh. whole concept is is just... all fast coffee the same well other than starbucks is there another place that has uh coffee like that i don't drink coffee at all so i don't know but what i'm similar saying is... example huh pizza is a similar example yeah What's, but i mean not... would it be they don't have yeah. they don't have um drive throughs I don't I don't know of a rest a pizza restaurant that has a drive through. Like to get me wrong. I like Yeah, to be fair, I I can't think of anything either. Yeah. So like that's my thing. If it has a drive through and and they serve food, and they serve food outside out through the drive through, it's fast food. So when the Krusty Krab opened up a drive through Oh my fucking god, please they, don't okay. Uh, they turned into a fast food restaurant. Uh, you fucker. <laughs> um, I thought this whole fucking thing was going straight to just you talking about the crusty crabs. No. <laughs> you son of a... Mm. Anyways, but again, I I just... If, if someone can like give me a really good example of a restaurant that has a drive through and then that also doesn't fit in the realm of fast food or or a place that doesn't have a drive through and is heavily 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 considered like in the same realm as like McDonald's and all those fast food joints that do have a drive through and i'm not including any like what i was reading of like food trucks and stuff like that because i think that's in their own category because that's basically family like they own like you don't see like if you see one a food truck you're it's very rare to see that same food truck like uh, you know a franchise of food trucks right it's very I, I don't i don't think i've ever seen it i'm pretty sure that it may be out there but i've never seen a franchise of different types of food trucks because usually what the food trucks are are either they're owned or they're owned by a restaurant that's promoting the restaurant. These are the only two uh, food trucks that I've ever seen. But that on the side, if someone can show me a restaurant with a drive through that is definitely not a fast food restaurant or a restaurant that doesn't have a drive through that is like arguably heavily a fast food restaurant like i i at least from where i've eaten here in our local area in a few other locations here in california in northern california i have not seen anything maybe in the middle of the united states in fucking nowhere, in the middle of nowhere, maybe, but I have not been shown that. Yeah. Just that's just where I stand. Like, I'll eat my words when when someone shows me this and this evidence. Like, I'll be like, oh well. Fuck, okay. Then go away. Have your have your arguments, you know, have your discussions. Compare the two because <laughs> Yeah. But you know, I just I can't. Like there's it, it makes like even though to myself I think In N Out is a better burger than Five Guys. I've had both of them. Um I still won't compare the two. I won't. Like, I would say, again, I prefer the in and out one, but I prefer it because I think it's better tasting, but it's also way cheaper. Like, the, 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 the price is a big thing for me 
and I can sit in my car and go through the drive through and eat in my car, right? Like, I don't have to leave my car for a second to get my in and out food, right? Look at you. Look at you. Socializing, man. <laughs> Live life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, that's just my thing, okay? Like, I can't compare in my definition of a fast food restaurant to places like Five Guys, Habit, um, what's it? There's a bunch of burger joints that are coming up. There's like uh, this one uh, in around Oak Grove called the Burger Lounge. Um, there's um, ah, whenever burger or something like that, whatever burger, um, Umi Burger. Uh, super oh, duper burger. burger joints. Dude, there's like so many of them. There's like, Mona's burgers. Like, uh, these places are everywhere. There's just like I I can't like I can compare them together because they're basically to me walk-in restaurants. I think that would be the term that I would give them walk-in restaurants, and and they're just. They're priced higher. They have higher quality f- food, right? Like, as much as I like In-N-Out, like, their beef is, like, 100% beef. That That's for sure. And they have, like, a higher quality beef. I think it's, like, um, I could be wrong, but I think it is, like, uh, grass-fed beef. I could be wrong, though. Um, but it's just higher quality beef than, like, other fast food restaurants, you know, the the corporate owned ones. Um, but I would still, like I said before, towards the beginning, I, when if I'm paying top dollar for a burger, like over $10, like at fucking, uh, again, habit, uh, five guys, uh, uh, Mona's, uh, burgers. I expect it to be higher quality. I expect it to be really good. My expectation is to prefer to eat that over in and out because it's a, it's supposed to be better than in and out right it's supposed to be my expectation is i should not like if i see the two and i know what they are i should want to eat the other burger and not in and out when i when i'm like huh like it's all right like i'm not like like to me out of the burgers that i've had that are not fast food burgers, like five guys isn't up there at all. Like I honestly prefer a burger made at home on a grill. Right. Like that's how I felt. Like, I'm like, I'd rather have just made my own burger at home. Like like that, that that's how I feel. You want me to make you a burger. Yeah. I'll make you a fucking burger and put all this fucking franchise fast food bullshit to rest look god damn it and harry i'll tell you i will enjoy it more than i enjoyed five guys good i'll i'll even i'll even fucking put on some pickled jalapenos for you that's just for you to, and oh man don't like people are like oh man they put mushroom and all this other shit on the burger at five guys like shut the uh, fuck up and I'm who like, gives a shit i'm like that's okay, the point exactly i'm like no fucking shit like again if I'm paying over ten dollars for a burger, I expect it, right? I'm expecting high quality food with extra shit on it. Like In and Out is simple and to the point. Here's a burger, or and some fries if you want it. Yeah. Like that's it. There, there's no chicken. There's no chicken nuggets. There's no fucking uh, crazy fucking ingredients. Like you know. Uh, would you like some black truffle on your fucking burger too? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, just. There's something that bothers me, and I, I know people do it on purpose to just start an argument, but it's like, it just, there's no, there should be no discussion. There should be no comparison. It just doesn't make any sense. It just, it just doesn't. It, there shouldn't be a discussion, you know? It should be as simple as, do you like Five Guys or not? That's it, you know? And you if you want to compare fast food restaurants... I, if you can put, like, if someone from Texas who has, who eats Whataburger all the time 
comes to California, eats in and out burger, and says, I prefer Whataburger. Fair enough. That I'm sure there's people there or out there that are like that. And fair enough, you know, everyone at, at the end of the day, it's all opinion, right? It's all preference. But I will not be okay if someone who eats a higher that, that what is supposed to be a higher quality burger and eats in and out, which is a fast food burger, and says, Oh, this higher quality burger is better. Like, oh no shit. It's supposed that's the whole point. You're paying more. It's fresher ingredients, higher quality ingredients. It's supposed to be better. It's when it's not better when that's the problem. That's the problem. And to me, Five Guys wasn't better. I still won't like really compare it, you know, even though I do say I would always have the In-N-Out Burger over the Five Guys Burger. It's just also in the sense of like, there are other burgers that I've had that are better than In-N-Out. Mono's burgers were fucking delicious. Habit has bomb ass burgers, dude. You know, like I've had better burgers than In and Out, but it's like that's the expectation. If I'm gonna pay more money, I expect a better burger than In and Out. You know, like, like I'm not saying In and Out's the end all be all. It's the greatest fucking burger in the world. Like, no. Best to me, fast food burger, but you know. But it's not the best burger in the world. Like I, I've had better burgers. I, I've had burgers at home that tasted better than In and Out burgers. It's like, but that's the point. It's a fast food burger. It's just a burger, plain. You eat it, and it's just, you know, it's good for the especially for the price. You know. Oh, okay. I, I think I'm done ranting. I think. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Harry, I thought you were going to fucking start quoting the Bible on me and, like, getting oh, some I holy water out there. Dude, I totally forget that In-N-Out is owned by Mormons, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it it's... They are a franchise. No, they're not a franchise. Are they a franchise? Yes. It's, own, it's a franchise, but it's owned by the same people. And they are Mormon. Hold on. Could be wrong. Could be Jehovah's Witness. Hold on. Uh, you know how we talk about things we don't know anything about. It's the whole show, dude. Yep. Um. Uh, I don't think it's gonna say. Um. Uh, but the family's uh surname is Snyder. Um. Uh, um. Uh, yeah. It's not saying. Well, maybe if I just click on their names. Nope. Doesn't tell me anything. Look at that. Anyways, but they are uh, religious, and um, yeah. So that's that. That's a thing. Which is which is fine. I I, I really don't care. Um. Yeah, they have like. Oh, bud. It's it's the food. That's what really matters to me. You know. Um. But uh. For me to get in the way of you and food, pal. Dude, food's fucking delicious. I don't know if you ever had food, but <laughs> food's fucking good, man. I recommend hey, it highly. Food is fucking it. good. <laughs> um. All right. There's a trailer you've been trying to talk to me about. Oh, yeah. No, it's nothing fancy. The new David Cronenberg film. David Cronenberg. Crimes of the Future. Nothing Ooh. fancy. There's nothing different from, like, any other horror film or, like, movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do like David Cronenberg. I do love his use of body horror. And this looks like his most body horror yet. yet. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, he did... Uh, I think the probably the most widely known was the fly okay yeah uh he did the fly history of violence did a couple of them right off the top of my head i can't fucking it'll come to me and i'm gonna be so fucking mad that i didn't mention it but anyway the fly is my favorite david cronenberg movie has like one of my favorite fucking quotes mm -hmm. that i can't fucking remember so i'm not gonna 
butcher it the entire time now. But yeah, um, looks really fucking weird. Looks really in keeping with uh, the whole David Cronenberg uh, weird uh, elevated body horror. I think he's the only person who I think is capable of like taking body horror and doing something legitimate with it. That's not true. There was a French filmmaker who came out with a really interesting movie called Titan. Mm -hmm. um, T-I-T-A-N-E. Uh, about a serial killer who is impregnated by a car. Okay. Yeah. Harry, everyone, look up the trailer to this. It's got fucking um, the zombies, She's Not There song playing to it. And it sounds amazing with this trailer. It's well edited and whatnot. I, I got like an idea of what it is from someone telling me about it. And I like fucking looked that shit up. And I was like, Oh, this looks fucking amazing. Really interesting body horror, uh, that I would love to show, but like, Oh, Hey, Ma, probably you want to see this body horror thing? Oh, sure. And then like fucking 10 minutes later, turn it off. Oh, Hey babe, you want to see this fucking body horror thing? Ew, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey anyone you want to see this weird fucking movie but anyway i digress um interesting in seeing it so far it looks like it's set in the future there's mm. some of course body horror stuff vigo mortensen um aragorn is in it uh mm. looking very intimidating and frightening as always leah sidhu for anyone who probably mostly knows her from uh uh, Death Stranding as oh. uh, the the one with the umbrella always walking around. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then Kristen Stewart. Oh. And they seem to be the, the three main actors pointed out in the trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm interested in seeing it. I really am. Uh, okay. Pretty much anything he puts out, I enjoy seeing it. It has such a calm reserved sense of insanity okay. if that makes any sense sure like there's no overly frenetic filmmaking there's no you know uh extra cerebral psychopathy i'm just using fucking words but like it's very paced and methodical and it, it feels like a slow motion car accident i don't know how to explain it when mm. i think of when I think of the fly, I think of like, I see a tragedy that's slowly rolling out. Right. And you can see that it's a tragedy. Yeah. Uh, and instead of it relying on body horror or like violence, the violence seems to like be in line with his very calm, and very forward thinking filmmaking, not forward thinking, his uh, deliberate filmmaking. I don't know. It's strange. I, I, I can't help it. All of his movies feel very dreamy and uh, and very smooth, even if there's like fucking a fly dude vomiting acid on a guy's ankle. Yeah. So, yeah, interested. Check it out if anyone uh, is so inclined. Mm -hmm. It is. Crimes of the Future. Crimes of the Should be coming out sometime in May. Hmm. Yeah, I mean I'm down. Shit. You know what else is coming out in May? What's coming out in May? Strange. What what Doctor Strange? Can you hear me? What what what? Doctor Strange. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna have to see it. Yeah, we definitely are. I've been hey. in a fucking dry spell because of all the fucking school and shit I've been dealing with and work and all that, but yeah, trying happens, to get back man. into it, mm -hmm. and I will get back into it. I believe it. With you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we also need to catch Morbius together. <laughs> I'm hearing mm. such great things about oh, it. Oh, fantastic things, man. Yeah. It makes me really glad that we're not spending a lot of money to go see a movie about a child groomer mm -hmm. in stilts on and off set, taking up people's very valuable shooting time. 
for a movie that probably isn't going to have him being in stilts for more than two or three scenes. Not stilts. Uh, uh, Bit things. Stilts. Jesus Christ. It's fine. I I know what you meant. Thank you. Thank you, mm-hmm. Harry. Mm-hmm. You're so, yeah. very welcome. Got to check that out. Uh, to be honest, I'm I'm fantastic beast out. Beast it out. I mean, I'll probably check it out eventually, but like, yeah, I have, uh, I don't, I don't really have any enthusiasm. And I'm hearing some solid reviews. Mm. I'm hearing that, um, it's kind of a generic step, but it kind of finds its footing at least as mm-hmm. to what it wants to do. Uh, but again, like, reviews that aren't like widely yeah. available to the public. Yeah. So I don't know. After all the shit with J.K. Rowling. I know that like she's separate from it, but like it's just hard to not associate that with her. Like I get like it's not her. Yes. She's not writing it anymore. Like mm-hmm. she wrote the fucking previous movie. But I don't know. I well, don't know. Uh, I don't blame you, man. I mean Yeah. Like I wouldn't want to support someone like that either. Um, it's not like she's like directly getting like every cent, but still. I just it's not like no, I, I yeah no still of course I get you. It's just it, it's not even like I want to protest this movie or like I just don't want to. It's just like it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, and I just don't have the energy, mm-hmm. like. <laughs> I, we saw the trailer for it, like I think a little while ago, with a movie that that uh, that we saw for the for that uh, the outfit, yes. the, the 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 cutter guy I was telling you about, and Dad was like, "Oh shit, Dumbledore's gay," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, you didn't realize you had like fucking ten, twelve years of fucking uh, like fucking." knowledge to know that he's like wait what are you talking about he's like oh you didn't know fucking jk rowling just like said on the internet that dumbledore was gay without any like any information in the books any of it in like other movies and then they finally like legitimized some like half-hearted attempt to diversify the franchise over the internet in the movies so I'm just thinking of that, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I was like, oh, wait. It's just so much more sour, like, seeing all the shit that she's put people through and, like, all of the the smarminess that she's done, like, with people's lives. I don't know. It just it just sours, like, like I get it. The, it if it was the books, it would be another thing. And the movies are different. It's not like she directed, wrote, fucking picked everyone to do these parts or whatever. I get it. There, it's a team effort. She's not like directly involved with any of those movies, but like, I can't help, but like wince a little bit. Right. Like we've, we talked about this a while ago, like a couple months back, death of the author. Like, is it, yes. is it entirely possible to separate uh, a writer or a, a, oh, from their work? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we, we have that discussion. So, you know, it, you know, it's tough. It, it, I, I keep saying it, it just leaves like a bitter taste in my mouth. Like, yeah, I, don't know. I feel it. There's a, a YouTuber who, Sean, his name is S-H-A-U-N. He actually does a pretty pretty fun breakdown if you have the time it's like 40 minutes Mm -hmm. i know long free form videos aren't not free form uh video essays aren't really your thing but if you're interested give it a look he kind of breaks down like all of the quirks about it too that kind of just open up all of the the little like oh well so that's kind of who she is as a person or what you can infer from her writing i suppose and i get it like video essayists they can edit whatever they want to make themselves look and sound like like fucking philosophers but i thought um i think this youtuber has a pretty good uh sense of how he interprets information and outputs it so 
Give it a shot if you're interested. Sean on YouTube. Sean on YouTube, okay. Yeah, put that shit on 1.25. Yeah, Get dude. done in like 30 minutes. Let me vent to you about 1.25. Um, That thing is... Why are people comparing that and 1.5 as fast when 1.25 obviously isn't as fast as... No, I'm yeah. kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was that was a low blow. I apologize. No, that's good, dude. Um, No, yeah. It, like, uh, someone I actually watched on YouTube um, because YouTube for me was always just like... It, I didn't use it how I use it now. I used it just to watch... I watched... Like, the best way I can describe it is visual videos where I had to watch them visually. You know, like, um, you know, gaming videos. Mainly gaming videos, right? Um, and there's a guy who... I see, so he started... What he would do is kind of like... Kind of like um, um, fuck, what was the term? Vlogs? Yeah, there you go. Vlogs. He kind of did some vlogs here and there, and he, like was like kind of like trying to motivate people and stuff like that like while he was doing his like he used to play magic the gathering so that's how i found out about the guy and he was saying like you know like like you want to put your youtube videos on 1.5 speed or two times speed if you want if you can like you know understand what the hell's happening but like you save so much time you watch more videos and blah blah, blah. And i was like holy fuck i didn't even know there was a feature to do that <laughs> yeah, the fucking YouTubers were going other other people's videos, and it was like, yeah, 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 dude. Uh, and I just started watching all my videos like that, and yeah, like I can like, I have so my drive from my house to work is about twenty minutes, right, give or take. Um, I get to watch two twenty-minute videos. Or, sorry, not watch, but I have it, like, on, you know, set up through the speakers. So, you know, the stuff that I watch now, or what I use YouTube now, is for, for more for information, right? Just to learn things here and there. So, I'm able to put a video on, on my drive to work. Like, obviously, I'm not watching the video. It's just all listening to the video. And I'm able to watch two 20-minute videos um, on the way to work. And it's, like... I'm I'm watching, you know, multiple videos where I, if I had a regular time, I would have just been watching one. And sometimes, like, I've been doing it for so long now, like, it's hard to watch something that's not sped up like that. Or to listen to something that's not sped up. So if it's at regular time, or, or regular speed, it, like, annoys me. I'm like, how can I speed this up? I need them to talk quicker. <laughs> for me, I don't know. I'm 50-50. Hmm. For me, it's like, um, yeah, I like when things are sped up a little bit because it feels like maybe some of the content that I don't care about is kind of getting through a bit. Or maybe yeah. like I can ingest this information about the same. And I realize I can't. Mm. Okay. But, you know, uh, not terrible. But sometimes I notice like I'm not always able to pay attention. I have... I've been mm -hmm. having issues with focusing lately. I don't know what the fuck it is. I could just be a fucking idiot. But, um, yeah, sometimes it'll just be like, I, I just, I can't do anything particularly fast. Sometimes mm -hmm. I got to fucking listen to shit a couple times over again. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. But, um, I have one more topic, but I think I'm going to save it. For a later uh, podcast, it's one Let's of those. Make sure that we save it, and we know that we're going to be talking about it next week. Yeah, no, no, it, it's one of those topics that's like, it's not really a, a a topic, or it's obviously a topic. It's one of those topics where it's like, if we don't really have much to talk about for the week, uh, this is one of those topics. Um, so okay. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. It's it's. We're, we're going to talk about it. It's just not today. Maybe not even next week. 
but we will talk about it. I think you'll I'm you'll be interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, man, I'm horrible at segues, dude. Ah, you're fine, pal. Mm-hmm. I believe in you. I was just gonna be like, all right, something, something, and then segue into like you doing the outro, but I'm not good at that kind of stuff, man. Hey, bud, you're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, is that it? You want me yeah. to just do the outro then, huh? It's midnight, man. We got I work tomorrow. You got work tomorrow, man. Thanks for reminding me how fucking old I am. Yes, folks. We love doing this. And you know what we also like doing? Waking up for the fucking early bird special, apparently. Mm-hmm. Fucker. And if you want to see more of our content or hear more of our content, you can check us out at Hitting the Mark with Harry and Mark on YouTube. And if you want to message us, give us some input, tell us what we can uh, work on, tell us what we can take out. Uh, be our joke writers, huh? Yeah, see, mm-hmm. that's funny. Harry wrote that joke for me. Uh, you can hit us up at hitting the mark 2020 at gmail.com. And if you want to keep up to date on our razor sharp content on the second by second basis, you can hit us up on Twitter at capital H, capital T, capital M underscore podcast. One more time, HTM underscore podcast. Now, partially owned by elon musk or Mm. soon to be shit we didn't even talk about that god damn it you know what i hate harry yeah i hate when rich saudi billionaires are compared to even richer south african diamond trading billionaires Mm, yeah like it doesn't even like doesn't even compare yeah you're right but folks we'd love to keep doing this as we always do and we look forward to talking again next week bye bye no, you're supposed to say alvita zane i know I was, I was, harry I was, wiener schnitzel wiener schnitzel there you go there you go big guy <laughs> right, bye bye